Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. Glad you joined us today. We're going to have a great show on parasitology with Dr. Greg Hanslicek here from Kansas State University's Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory. We're glad you joined us and I hope you enjoy this show. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. to you by the new hired hand portable cow sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Greg, welcome to the show. Glad to be here. Folks, this is Dr. Greg Hanslicek. He is a veterinarian and he is with the Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory here at Kansas State University. Does a lot with, with uh, field investigations. You do a lot of work. He has a lot of experience as a bovine practitioner and we're lucky to have him here at Kansas State University serving our state and, and beyond the boundaries of the state, and thanks for being here. My pleasure. So we're going to talk about parasites, and there's all kinds of them, right? Lots of parasites, yep. <laughs> uh, externals, internals, uh, different types of internals, but let's start by, by talking about the, the ones that are buzzing around out there around our head in the summer. The flies. Right yep. now, and we're getting into fly, fly season, and if you drive around the country, you'll see the cows are now starting to be uh, irritated by the horn flies and the face flies. So, yep, it's an important topic. Yep, and and some of the things that you know, you're exactly right. We see the cattle bunching up and swishing, and and uh, of course we're going to have some some issues that are follow with the flies. But but what are some of the things or or concerns that we have with the flies with with cattle? Well, and it depends on what type of fly we're talking about. We talk about face flies. They're flies that they just they spend a very small amount of time on the animal. They feed on the eye juices, the nose juices. The thing we're worried most about them is the pink eye. Right. They transmit the, the bacteria from animal to animal. Talk about horn flies. Horn flies are actually on the ones on the back, and you know that. But yep. I don't know why we named them horn flies, but they're not on the horns. <laughs> right. but, but they're blood suckers, and they feed 20 to 30 times a day. And if you go out there, and especially if you look at those bulls, they have thousands upon thousands of flies on them. And they're an irritant. So they, they keep the cows and the bulls and the calves from grazing, from nursing, uh, from producing milk and doing those kind of things. Cool. And, and so we have, obviously, we have different types of disease and, and everybody associates the, the pink eye and, 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 and vector-borne type diseases. What are some of the things that people are doing these days out there to kind of help with the flies? What are some management practices that, that we can enlist or use? That's a great question. Number one are fly tags. Yep. Uh, use of the insecticide fly tags. Uh, of all the things that we can use, it probably is the most effective. Um, and I say that because we really don't have control over the face flies because they don't spend enough time on the animal. If we use pour-ons or back rubbers or any of those kind of things, those flies come and go so they don't have uh, much experience or access to the insecticide, but the fly tag helps with those. But the fly tag also helps with the horn flies and the other flies we're, we're concerned with. Yep, and then I'm, I'm assuming that there's some things we can do environmentally, knocking down weeds and cleaning up old bell rings and things to that nature as well. There is, because the face flies and the stable flies, they don't spend any time on the animal. They live in old vegetation and uh, rotten feed and those kind of things. So cleaning up those areas will uh, reduce 
the area where they can lay their eggs. So that's a good fly control program for them environmentally. Cool. Well, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk with more with Dr. Hanslicek on parasites, and we'll move from outside the cow to, to inside the cow. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're sure glad you joined us. This Meet the Future Veterinarian is brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Blaine Johnson grew up on a cow, calf, and feedlot operation in Red Oak, Iowa. His undergraduate work was in animal and dairy science, receiving a Master's of Science in Animal Science with a focus in ruminant nutrition. Blaine is currently a fourth year veterinary student at Iowa State University College of Veterinary Medicine and will graduate in May 2016. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Zuprivo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo from Merck Animal Health. Hey folks, Dr. Dan here, and I want you to join us in Kearney, Nebraska on May 11th for a stockmanship clinic. We're gonna talk about how to work cattle in teams, we're gonna talk about cattle handling techniques and much more. Experts from across the country are gonna be there. Dr. Tom Knopfsinger, Kurt Pate, Ted Howard, Kip Lugasavage, myself, many more are gonna be there to work with you on this clinic. Go to packdvms.com to get the agenda and to register. Parasites will lose you more money than any other disease out there besides infertility. So, you know, parasites is something that we have to control and that's what Vet Gun does for us. It's tough out there on a the ranch, but with the ease of the Vet Gun, it's a one man operation. And whenever you can get one thing to work out great throughout that day, it just makes my life a little easier. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson, Dr. Greg Hanslicek, and Dr. Hanslicek is with the Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory where do a lot of different things, wears a lot of different hats, but is always out in the field and always working with practitioners and producers and where the rubber meets the road. And, and Greg, when we talk about uh, parasites, we'll move from outside to inside the animal. Let's talk about some of the internals and what are some of the different species that we should be most concerned with when it comes to, to cattle. That's a great uh, question. There's, cattle have lots of different species of worms. Uh, the main one we're concerned with is one called Ostertagia, and it lives in the in the stomach. Mm -hmm. uh, causes certain uh, things like nutrient malnutrition, uh, suppresses immunity, those kind of things. Uh, some of the other worms we mainly concerned about the capurias. They live in the small intestine. They have we know that they have an effect on the gain of calves that are in pasture. Uh, Amonchus is another one that's not so much in this area, but mainly a southeast uh, worm. Those are the three main ones that we're actually concerned about today. Okay, and so when, we, when we're looking at, at those types of, of worms, and again, they're all gonna affect performance or, or conception rates or body condition scores and things to that nature. Um, you know, what are some of your, your recommendations? And of course, we always recommend work with your local practitioner because they're the ones that are living there and know the cattle and the climate and, and you know. But what are some of the things, kind of some general concepts on, on parasite control? Some of the uh, major things to think about is that, uh, just like you said, most of the effects are things that you don't probably recognize. So most of the problems we have with internal parasites are subclinical. We can't see them right. unless we actually measure them. Uh, the other thing about internal parasites is that it is becoming a controversial subject as far as how we should manage them in the cow-calf uh, operation. But a part of that is 
that we have to remember that 90% of the worms that these calves and cows have access to are actually in the pasture. Uh, only 10% of them are actually in the animals. And so pasture, uh, how do we control the environment and maintain the env environment is very, very important for this disease. Cool. Um, you know, we have a lot of different products out there. We've got injectable, we've got uh, the, the ivermectins, the avermectins, um, we've got uh, drenches, you know, the finbendazoles, and, and we've got porons too. Any uh, preferences or any thoughts on that or use one? Uh, well, there's two thoughts. One is yep. that we do know literature shows and research shows that with the, the avermectins, the, that compound, we are starting to see some resistance in the worms. But if you look at uh, other countries that use the other products also, we're seeing resistance to basically all those products. And then the second point would be? Well, a really good recommendation for producers is let's, let's deworm the adult animals when they go to pasture. That way we're reducing pasture contamination. The calves are going to pick up the worms in the pasture and let's deworm everybody when we come off the pasture, let's clean them up. So we're doing two things. We're making sure the pasture doesn't have a high load of parasites, but we know animals are going to pick up those parasites. Let's clean them up when we get off the pasture. I it's think, a pretty simple program. Yep, and it, it sounds like great advice to clean the environment and then clean up the cattle as we come off. Absolutely. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit about coccidiosis. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're glad you joined us. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. Hello folks, this is Dr. Nels Lindbergh with Animal Medical Center and Production Animal Consultation out of Great Bend, Kansas. Today's BQA tip of the day, we want to visit about fly control. Fly control is a very important aspect to any operation that's running cattle because as we all know, flies can get very bad in the summer, uh, especially late summer. We have different products and different things we can use to combat flies. Uh, most importantly, we want to focus on it before the fly population is too high. We focus on it afterwards. We can be a little too late to the, to the party. We want to use products that are effective around premises, along bunk lines, but also on these animals. We have to take care of the environment as well as the animals. There are some great products out there. There's some new products that are very long lasting. Products that can be washed off buildings, washed off cement, multiple, multiple times, last for several weeks. Again, there are some great new products out there. Check them out, contact your local veterinarian, he can help you out and give you some answers for your fly control population problems. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. Broadband has become as important to us as highways. That is why Doc Talk is teaming up with NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association, and rural broadband companies like Blue Valley Telecommunications in fighting for quality broadband access through the program Smart Rural Communities. I don't think we have any idea what's coming in the future. I couldn't have imagined five years ago what we're doing today. So in two years, I would guess there's things we can't imagine that we're going to be doing. To learn more, visit ntca.org forward slash smart or bluevalley.net. Beef producers asked for it, and the wait is over. Enroflox 100 Enrofloxacin from Norbrook, now approved for single-dose treatment and control of bovine respiratory disease. With the same active ingredient and dosing regimen as Batril 100 in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle. Choose Enroflox 100 when looking for an injectable antimicrobial solution to treat and control BRD. Observe label directions and withdrawal times. See product labeling for full product information, including warnings and precautions. Consult your veterinarian to see if Enroflox 100 is right for your cattle. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification EID, electric fencing and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson with Dr. Greg Hanslicek, and he is with the Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory at Kansas State University. And, and Greg, we're talking about parasites and, and one of them I know that you've done quite a bit of work with and, and, and looked at is coccidiosis. Yes. 
and um, you know a lot of times we don't consider coccidiosis a parasite out in the out in the country. We think of it more as like a bacteria or a, you know something we're going to treat for or that because we do treat differently than what we do for our internal parasites. And really, this is a parasite. It is a parasite, it, and it is closely related to the the cryptos and, and some of those other things. But it it is an internal small intestine uh, parasite. Okay. And, and what are some of the, you know, I think one of the things that, that producers don't understand is how common it is. It's, pro it's actually probably the most common disease other than bovine respiratory disease that we deal with with calves that are around weaning just before or just after weaning on the cow-calf side. And there can be a subacute, kind of a non-clinical uh, carriage. Of these? Absolutely. Just like the other internal parasites, what you see is only a very small percentage of what's actually going on in the rest of the animals. Right. So, so not only do we have the opportunity of having clinical disease from, from this parasite, but we can have the subclinical that's causing us lost performance, lost uh, uh, conversion of that grass or, or that cow's milk or, or feed when they get into the grow yard. That's exactly right, and with coccidia, it, it causes uh, severe malnutrition if the numbers of those organisms are severe enough in the intestine. Those calves are eating what they should, but they're not absorbing those nutrients, and so we've got a malnutrition which has a huge impact on their immunity. So that's why we know that calves that are, have a heavy coccidia burden are more susceptible to other diseases like bovine respiratory disease, maybe pink eye, those other kind of diseases. So. It's important. Okay, so how are some ways that, that we can prevent or, or treat for coccidia on, on these calves that are, you know, in different stages? Well, that's a great question. Uh, one thing to remember is that every facility has coccidia. It's right. a normal inhabitant of all bovines, and so animals have it. They're passing it through the manure. So one of the best ways to prevent a really severe coccidia outbreak is to concentrate on manure buildup. Okay. Uh, the other thing is standing water. When we have standing water where an animal with coccidiosis will defecate in the water, now all that coccidia's in the water, what do animals like to do, they like to drink out of those? Now we're inoculating the whole population to large doses of coccidia. Yeah, I used to get into some of those coccidia outbreaks on, on uh, cattle when we'd get into that freeze-thaw cycle where it'd be warm during the day and thaw out and freeze at night and the cattle drink groundwater um, and, and, Absolutely. and really have some tough times those times of, of the year. Uh, any compounds or anything, if I do get into a coxie wreck that you recommend or, or think about? There are some good products on the market and we're talking mainly products that you'd have to feed in a bunk. So, you know, it'd probably post weaning kind of thing, but uh, Corid, Amprolium, yep. that's a product that's really effective, not only for uh, treatment, but also for prevention. So those are, they're, they come in a pellet, get them in a liquid to put them in the water or feed them in a pellet, very effective products. Perfect. Folks, we're gonna take a break. When we come back, more with Dr. Hanslicek on parasites. You're watching Doc Talk. thanks for joining us. When looking at the number of farm and ranch operations, the USDA Census of Agriculture says cattle and beef production is the largest single segment of American agriculture. The census also says the average age of the American cattle farmer or rancher is in the late 50s. In order to support the continuous supply of U.S. beef, these producers need to do some business planning to successfully transfer their cattle operations to younger, independent producers. Uh, I'm Joe Mushrush with Mushrush Red Angus. and. Uh, my ancestors have been in this part of the world. Well, they walked in after the Civil War from Virginia. My dad was the start of Mushrush Red Angus. When we come back from college, we had about 100 cows. Was working mainly part-time. My wife Connie and I, once we took over, tried to expand rapidly, making it into a full-time uh, operation. We have told our kids that any of them that wish to return to the ranch, why we would do our level best to uh, make a spot for them. And so far, our oldest son, Daniel, is now back full time with us. And some of the others have expressed a desire to return. And so we have dedicated most of what we do into creating a spot and making a viable entity for the, anybody that wants to come back. 
in, in an effort to get more of our family back on the business, we've started our own meat company. And so when we can take, say, a flat iron or a petite tender, and our local packing house has the knowledge and the ability to turn that into a higher retail cut, we'll sell those retail cuts quicker, and we'll sell them for three to four times the price of what we would sell them without some of those cuts being available to us. The beef checkoff allows us to do something that we can't do on our own. We do not have the, the time or resources or the knowledge to go out and approach consumers on our own. By pooling our resources with other producers, it allows us to reach those consumers that we otherwise would not have any way to reach. And by combining our resources and our voice, why hopefully we can make a difference and I hope one day that my children will be here on the ranch. And so we need to be able to be responsive to the demands of future generations that we may not even be aware of, and the checkoff helps our industry do that. Healthy cows start with the new hired hand automatic livestock sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher, leaving more time to tend to other vital tasks on the farm. To learn more, visit cowsprayer.com. The new hired hand makes healthy cows easy. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We're having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson with Dr. Greg Hanslicek. We're at Kansas State University where Greg works at the Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory, works with field investigation. He directs our outreach programs and, and much more. And we're we're fortunate to have him here on the show and we've had a great show talking about parasites and one of the things that you and I talked about during the break was talking about some of the things that has to do with with resistance and and really what I'm talking about is is with the flies. Absolutely. Uh, we talked about earlier how fly tags are probably the most used product for control of flies. Um, they are effective but there are certain things that we need to keep in mind if we're using that product for fly control. Uh, and one is resistance. We know that if we use the same chemical product year after year, we're gonna breed flies that become resistant to that insecticide. So uh, if people are using pyrethroids and organophosphate tags, which most are, it's important they use two years of pyrethroids, the third year they use an organophosphate, then they go back to pyrethroids for two years. That rotation will reduce the the opportunity for resistance. That makes makes a lot of sense and and uh, you know when we have cows and 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 perennial uh, animals on the farm uh, important to get things removed? Absolutely and that's the other important thing is that flag tags are great uh, and when we put them in there's a lot of insecticide there but through time that amount of insecticide is going to be reduced and so if we're not taking those insecticide tags out in the fall and getting rid of them, what we're doing is exposing flies to very, very small amounts of insecticide. So the only flies we're killing are those that are most susceptible to that insecticide and we're breeding those that are resistant. And it makes a lot of sense then <clears throat> that, you know, we got the cows caught before we go to pasture, deworm them, put the fly tags in, bring the cows out in the fall, we're gonna preg check, just have somebody up there cutting tags out. Absolutely, that's a simple program that, that does work. You bet. Um, I know you do a lot of work at the D-Lab and I'm kind of putting you on the spot, but you know, what's kind of your philosophy of, of just producers working with their practitioner? Uh, of course I'm a practitioner, and I still right. consider myself to be a practitioner, uh, but I was a producer once in my life too, but that, that interaction between 
producers and their local veterinarian is, is really key to, to not only producers uh, thriving during the good times like it is now for cow-calf operators, but really surviving during the hard times, which there's a lot of hard times. That, that relationship, those producers relying on their veterinarian to provide them with the latest information on prevention and treatment and management of their, of their herds is, is really vital to, to everybody. Yeah, you bet. Well, I know one thing is that um, you are a practitioner uh, first and foremost, and what you do and how you work for the practitioners of the state and beyond is much appreciated. I appreciate that. Thank you. Folks, Dr. Greg Hanslicek, thanks for joining us today on Doc Talk. If you want to know more about what we do on Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. DocTalk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.